here it uh, I've got the script available at prusamk2.com the best way to find it is just pull a search type glass and uh, if you're having trouble getting I've got this is my own personal website I've got on a server here with a variety of other websites so it's not just about keeping this site secure it's about keeping a server secure and I primarily do business in the United States Canada and Australia so I've got it locked down and I only give access to people who uh, who really want to be here and uh, uh, know to some degree, might have control. But nonetheless, um, print on the glass, click this link, and I've got some G code here that you can just copy and paste. And we'll go ahead and copy that. And like I said, I've got Simplified 3D here. I'm going to go into the process here, and under scripts, we've got startup scripts. This is where you're going to place that and replace the current startup script you already got. Now, you can create another profile and save it as a glass or give it whatever name that you're familiar with. That way, your startup script that you're normally using for your print jobs doesn't get interrupted. But just for this sake, I'm going to go ahead and paste what I've got in here. I also have a couple extra things in here you may or may not need it. Uh, PID tuning, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And what we got is it's going to um, play a, song, a little tune to let you know that it's initiated. And you're going to do the majority of this. Actually, you're going to run it all without the glass on the bed. So uh, it's going to play a little sound. It's going to run your mesh, uh, mesh bed leveling as, leveling as normal. Uh, once it's done with that, it's going to raise the, the nozzle up and get it out of your way. It's going to play a beep uh, at, at a one-minute interval and give you another beep to... Um, give you time. So it's going to be about two minutes before your print's going to uh, resume. Also, this line here, you're going to want to enter in the um, thickness of your glass. Mine happened to be 2.3 millimeters, just regular window pane glass from the hardware store. And um, if you're using uh, linear advance, you might put that here. And uh, that's going to help you pretty good. I forgot what the code that was. It's K45, so I'll just go ahead and paste that in. K45, that's for what I use for PLA. So I'll do K90. K90, that's what I use for my ESUN PTG. So it's going to run the script, do mesh bed leveling, give you two minutes to get your glass on, get it clipped into place, and then it's going to begin to print as normal. And it's just going to print in the same fashion that it, you're used to except it's going to be on glass. You'll be able to run your mesh bed leveling and, and just as you you're norm, normally do. Once you get it tweaked in and your glass is to the accurate dimension, you really don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't even have to run a lot of Z when I've got glass on or not. So pretty convenient that way. So I'll go ahead and let me go ahead and see what my, uh, I'll exit out of here and see what I've got for my settings. Usually with PT, I run about a one uh, millimeter retraction Running linear advance, I don't need any other settings other than the vertical lift. I like to run that. Layers, it's about four and three outlines. Uh, it's good to run a skirt to prime that, that nozzle, you know, if you've got an important part. Infill, we'll leave that at, uh, we'll put, run that about 20%. I like to change my uh, fill uh, angle offsets here uh, to 90 and then um, 180 and, I, and it, it makes for nice clean um, left to right up to down type uh, infill rather than 45 degree angles on your print just makes it look a lot better in my opinion won't be any support bed temperature will be uh, I'll start my first layer at 225 on PTG and then I drop it down to 210 found have had good re results with that like to run no fan on my first layer. My second layer, I'll run it about 80%. That way I can bump it up if I did have bridging to a full 100%. This is enough. You really don't even need to run it unless you're doing any bridging and if you've got your temperatures correct. G codes, uh, everything's good there. Speeds, I'll go ahead and leave it at 50 just for this example. Um, advance, I like to leave single extrusion walls on and allow gap fill. Now let me find a uh, find myself a uh, let's see get that out the way. Let me get myself a, a STL file. Let me do this here. We'll use a little end cap for the Harbo. 
and it goes into those 3030 extrusions. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and prepare that to print. Get a look at it, make sure everything's okay. Everything looks good. Get my SD card put in there. We'll just give it a name since it'll be a throwaway ultimately. All right, so now let's head back over to the printer and uh, watch this script start up. Okay, so got my glass here. It's been heating up good. And what I'm going to do is run my script, take that glass off, and once it runs through its mesh bed leveling, then I'll put that glass back on and clip it down. Check my nozzle. Make sure nothing's dripped. Go ahead and start that script. Or print that G-code, rather. Since it's hot, I'm going to put it over here. Take this glass off. Just set it on the side there for a minute. It's just it's right over leaning against the, the, uh, my enclosure. So let's take a look down here. Just running a mesh bed leveling as normal. Sometimes that nozzle will leave little boogers along on the bed, and I'll scrape those off before I put that glass in. And once it's done with mesh bed leveling, it'll go up a little bit and give you room to put that glass under there. It's coming up now. I set this. Uh, There's nothing on that bed. You don't want any kind of bumps in there. Go ahead and set this glass in place. Then just use some clips. I usually just use three. I'll put two in the back and one up front there out of the way from that purge strip. And so I've got all those in place. some in the back and then these or that one in the front I'm putting that glass on there cools it down I think what I've got my temperature set to preheat a little bit hotter and then my G code takes over from there that beep you heard was one minute warning it gives you another minute before it actually uh, starts to print check that nozzle so We'll let that print and get you a look at uh, that smooth as glass print because that glass really does make things look nice. All right, be right back when this is done. Alrighty, so we're just about done, 98% finished. And we'll let you get a look at that uh, print when it comes off the bed. It's gonna mimic whatever surface it's printed on so you know glass is about as smooth as you can get. So there it goes, it's done. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Alright. And let me go ahead and get that guy off of there. Okay. You can see. Now it just there's no way that I can even show you. This just doesn't look as impressive as it truly is. It just 
it doesn't there you go you can see some of the the glossiness of that you can see let me see if I can get it just there's no way you, there you go you can see some of it, how it is but just I'm telling you in person video just does not do it justice to, as glossy as that is and smooth it's squeaky smooth so, there you have it and I'll have this video on the website too so you can reference back to it alright guys and girls talk to you later bye bye